Hello, hello, everybody. It's good to have everybody here today. So we have a lot of current clients here on the live cast, and we've got a lot of new people that have never had any interaction with Suzanne or Numa or any of us. So uh, we want to welcome them also. So for uh, the new people on the call, uh, we're going to go through and introduce Suzanne, and then she's going to introduce the team. So Suzanne is a published author. If you were not aware, this is her book, uh, Navigating the Medicare Maze. And it's a great read for those that are just going on Medicare, uh, that are trying to get a basic understanding of it. Um, Suzanne is also on the board of the Columbus Association of Health Underwriters. And she was uh, designated as the official Medicare advisor uh, for the Columbus Bar Association, which is an association of uh, a few thousand um, legal professionals here in the Columbus, Ohio area. So uh, the last point here is Suzanne has impacted Medicare legislation, and uh, she has traveled to D.C. and uh, met with legislators. She will try to play this point down, but she's actually proposed uh certain things, certain legislation that applies to Medicare, and it has actually got passed. So she'll tell you that she played a small part, but, you know, we know, we know what, we know what it really is. So anyway, um, and I am honored, of course, to be married to Suzanne, and I affectionately refer to Suzanne as the queen bee of Medicare. So Suzanne, take it away. Well, thank you. <laughs> And you're right, it was not just me, but one thing I love to do is go to DC and um, you know do as much as I can to let them know what we deal with on a daily basis. You know, I I would definitely go there when I when I'm uh, there. I tell them stories, I tell them uh, situations, and um, it's interesting because I think a lot of it they don't really they don't really don't know. So. We de definitely do go fight on your behalf. So, and it's something I thoroughly enjoy. So a couple of these things that are changing um, for the positive, we are super excited to see it changed. Um, okay, enough about that. Um, so what I wanna do next is just um, introduce our team to you. And um, it's funny when, you know, when you call the office, you know, a lot of people, they just think they're gonna get me. And I always say, well, you're not gonna get me more than more times than not because I have this amazing team behind me. Um, so the first person I'm gonna introduce here is uh, Tisha Bivens. Now, here's what, what she does. She is the, uh, another Medicare advisor. So I brought her in, I've trained her up. I'm 100% confident. And if you, if you are a new client calling in, more than likely, you're probably going to talk to her to begin with. Um, and she will take excellent care. So Tisha, say hello. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad that y'all joined us today. All right. And then the other two I have here today is, um, is Alice Harlow and Ty Bodel. Now, they are my amazing senior support. So when Tisha and I talk to clients and... I advise them what they should and should not be doing. These two make sure that all the work gets done. So I just wanted to introduce both of them. So Tisha, I'm sorry, not Tisha, but Alice and Ty, go ahead and say hello. Hi, everyone. I'm really glad that you joined us today and we're glad to service you in every way we can. Hi, everybody. I'm Ty. Um, it's nice to see so many of you guys here. All right, so moving ahead. So what we're gonna do today is talk about the Medicare Advantage plans versus the Medicare Supplement plans. So what I've done is kind of just take like four points and kind of break it down, explain, and you know, answer any questions you might have. So really the first point we're gonna talk about is what will it cost me, the supplemental plans versus the Medicare Advantage? You cannot have both, it's an either or thing. Medicare Supplement, or Medicare Advantage. Okay, so with the Medicare Supplement plans, typically those plans have a higher monthly premium. Now it depends what state you're in and obviously what plan you pick, but you're looking at a 65 year old, somewhere being around $130, $140 a month in that ballpark. Now some states are more expensive than others, but that gives you an idea. Now with the Medicare Supplement plans, 
Um, depending on what plan you actually go with, I'm going to specifically talk about the plan G as in girl, because it, it that's the plan that has a deductible. So you would pay the first $226. And then of course, Medicare pays, and then your plan would pay. After you've met that deductible, the $226, as long as you're having a service done that Medicare covers, then of course your Medicare plan would pay or your Medicare and then your plan would pay. Okay, now what Medicare supplements do not have is the prescription drugs plan. So what you would have to do is we'd have to enroll you in a prescription plan, which is known as Medicare Part D as in drugs. Those are through private insurance companies. What do we help you do if you choose the Medicare supplement way? We help you determine which drug plan is the best option for you. Now, there's plans that are $15 a month. There's plans that are $90 a month. Your national average plan is about $35, give or take. So that, but that's a national average. So what we'll do is we'll, we determine if this is the way you go, we determine which plan makes the most sense for you. Now we'll uh, switch gears here to Medicare Advantage. With the Medicare Advantage plans, here's the way that those plans work. A lot of times there is zero to a very low cost uh, monthly premium to be on those plans. So with those Medicare Advantage plans, the way that they work is they combine your Medicare Part A and B with the federal government. And then of course, Medicare Advantage is known as Part C. And then the prescription drug card is included in most cases. So a Medicare Advantage plan is kind of like an all-in-one type plan. Typically, they have low to zero premiums. So the premium is low, but here's the difference with the out-of-pocket. With the Medicare Advantage plans, with the premium being low, you have a higher out-of-pocket. So typically, you have a, a service done, you know, outpatient service or doctor visit, physical therapy, or even an inpatient care um, something like that, you're going to have a, a copay or co-insurance that you would have to pay out of your pocket in most cases. Now, once again, lower premium means a higher liability to you. So that means you have more out-of-pocket cost that you're paying as you use it. So I've seen some like $3,500 max out-of-pocket. There's some plans I'm even seeing $10,000, $11,000. So Medicare Advantage, low premium, higher out of pocket on the backside as a liability for services rendered. Okay, the next point here we want to talk about is. Okay, Suzanne, I just wanted to interrupt real quick. So like, uh, obviously we have a lot of new people on here and we have a lot of current your current clients on here. So if you're a current client, um, just put in the chat, like maybe, um, you know, a brief, your brief experience on working with Suzanne, or at least put on there, like how you would re rate Suzanne and the NUMA team, uh, one through five stars, five being the best, of course. So if you want to do that in the chat, you can. One other thing is we offer to um, new people on the call, uh, what we call as a Medicare clarity call. And that is basically where uh, you will meet with either Suzanne or Tisha and um, go into like the personal, get some personalized advice on your exact situation. So we're going to have Tisha jump in here and explain the next point. So let me add. Okay, Tisha, take it away. All right. So what doctors and hospitals can I go to? So the first thing we're going to talk about is the Medicare supplement plans. So with the supplement plan, you can go to any doctor or hospital in the United States as long as they accept Medicare. You don't have to deal with any networks on a supplement plan. Now, with an Advantage plan, that's totally different. There's two types of Advantage plans. There's the HMO and a PPO. So an HMO it has a very strict network that you must stay in. With a PPO, um, you can go in and out of network with the PPO. Now, you're always going to get your lowest, lower cost staying in the network. 
but you do have coverage outside of the network as well. So a couple of different ways you can look at it is if you like to travel, it's good to have the Medicare supplement because you have the peace of mind knowing that no matter where you go in the United States, you have coverage because it's throughout the United States. Um, if you um, if you are if you're OK with paying a little bit more when you travel, a PPO could be the way to go for you. And then, of course, if you're one that maybe stays home and you know that your doctors and hospitals are in network and you don't really travel too much, then the HMO may be the way to go for you. So, Suzanne. All right. Let's talk about number three. And this is a question I just get. How much of a headache is it to have my claims paid? I had someone just yesterday that was talking to me about uh, one of their, with well, their employer plan. And they said, with my dental and vision, if I go to the dentist or the eye doctor, I have to get do all the legwork getting my insurance company to pay my claims. I have to take the bill to the insurance company. The insurance company has to reimburse me. So that's one of the concerns that I definitely hear from people is how much of a headache is this? So let me explain. With your Medicare supplement plan, the way that it works is you go to the doctor, hospital, or have your facility, you have a something done in a facility, they bill Medicare for you. So you're going to give them your red, white, and blue card. They bill Medicare. And then Medicare sends the, the rest of the bill to your secondary insurance. So whatever insurance company that you have for your secondary, Medicare auto sends that bill to them. So basically the way that it works is Medicare supplement, you send, they send the bill to Medicare, then it gets sent over to your supplemental insurance. And then if you have not reached the deductible, if you have a deductible on your plan, then you'll get a bill from whatever facility, you know, doctor, hospital, wherever you had the service done. Okay. So your supplemental, it's kind of all done kind of behind the scenes. They, they send the bill to Medicare, Medicare sends it to your secondary insurance. And then if there's anything left that you owe because you've not met deductibles and such, then you're billed from the facility. Now, Medicare Advantage works differently. So the Medicare Advantage, the way that those claims are paid, Medicare pays the Advantage company. So whatever company you picked, Anthem, Aetna, Humana, Medigold, whoever you picked. So Medicare pays the Advantage company. And then remember, because you have a low cost monthly premium, you have out of pocket cost for the services that you have rendered. So Medicare pays the Advantage company for their portion, and then you are billed the rest from the facility, whatever the copay would be, or the co-insurance that, you, that you're responsible for, for that service. And you would find uh, you would find what your cost is in like the benefit summary. So if you enrolled into a Medicare Advantage plan, you get a packet that says, these are the benefits, and this is what your cost is going to be for each service that you have done. All right, let's go on to point four. What if I have a pre-existing condition? Famous question. So let's talk about this because this is where it gets a little bit dicey and complicated. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands exactly how this works. Okay. So when you are just turning 65 or let's say you're retiring or coming off of an employer plan and just going on to Medicare. You are in what they call a, a guaranteed issue period. So you have a certain window of time. And during that window of time, if you choose to go with a Medicare supplement plan, then the way that it works is the pre-existing conditions are excluded. We don't, we don't have to worry about them. So I'm not gonna ask you, do you have a knee replacement set up? Because it doesn't matter. As long as you're just turning 65 or coming off of an employer plan or going on Medicare Part B, okay? So the pre-existing does not come into play. You can go on a Medicare supplement regardless of your health. Now, there are a couple times when, when you're going into Medicare that Medicare gives you what they call a trial period. Now, let me explain what this means. 
So let's say that you come to me at 65 years old and you say, oh, I'm just not sure if I want to go with a supplemental or a Medicare Advantage plan. So so my best way to explain this is, and I'm a very visual person. So I think of a ladder. At the top of that ladder is a Medicare supplement, because realistically, you cannot get more comprehensive coverage than a Medicare supplement. Going down the ladder is a Medicare Advantage plan. So if you start with a Medicare Advantage plan and you try to move up the ladder to a Medicare supplement plan, unless you're in a special time, then your medical uh, pre-existing conditions comes into play. So let me tell you two times where it does not come into play other than when you're just turning 65 or going off of a group. So Medicare does give you what they call a trial period. During this trial period, let's say you just turned 65, you just get your Medicare A and B starting, and you decide to go with a Medicare Advantage plan, you have 12 months to move up to a Medicare supplement without medically qualifying. So we're not gonna ask you any medical questions. So let's say you turn 65 and six months in, you say, you know what? I wanna go to a Medicare supplement or maybe you're diagnosed with something or maybe you just want, I don't know, the peace of mind of moving to a more comprehensive plan. You can do that within your first 12 months of your Part A effective date. Another way you can do it is let's say that you're currently on a Medicare supplement You've never been on an Advantage plan. So you've been on, you're on a supplement and you say, you know what? I'm going to try out a Medicare Advantage plan. During the open enrollment period, you can move from a Medicare supplement to a Medicare Advantage plan. And as long as you've not been off of that supplement more than 12 months, you can go back to that supplement regardless of health. So the pre-existing once again, won't come into play. But if you've been off of that supplement for more than 12 months and you decide to try to go back, we're going to have to put you back on um, through putting you through medical underwriting where your pre-existing does come into play. So that's one that's very tricky. And I have clients call me, you know, especially during open enrollment and say, hey, it's open enrollment, Suzanne. Can I move to a Medicare supplement? Because my doctor said I need my hip replaced or not. My health is starting to you know, I'm starting to see where I need a little better coverage. Can I move up? What's Medicare open enrollment? Can I do that? The answer is no, because you still have specific rules that we have to follow when going in, in the pre-existing conditions coming into play. All right. I lost Joe. Oh, okay, no, I'm still here. <laughs> hey, so uh, we, I just wanted to break in here and just... I mean, obviously, there's a lot of great information for new people, uh, new people new to Medicare. Obviously, you know, you probably get a ton of mail. You see a lot of ads on possibly TV, radio, whatever. And but and and this is great info that Suzanne's getting. But really, there's no substitute for personalized advice. So uh, we just wanted to put that out there. We we don't we don't give this to people to really for them to go try to do it on their own. It's more or less Suzanne provides this as a way to hey sh you know just show that she knows uh, she knows Medicare and you know to build that trust with you. So uh, if you're brand new, schedule that Medicare Clarity call. Uh, and then for all of our current clients on the, uh, the that are here, she's going to get to you here in a second with some good info on how Medicare supplement versus Medicare Advantage applies to you, applies to you. So Suzanne, um, go ahead and jump into the uh, five penalties that people that new people can experience. Okay, so we're going to talk about the five penalties. And what uh, once again, when I get calls so often. People say, well, Suzanne, my friend told me I better hurry up and sign up for something or I'm going to get penalized. So what I'm going to do is just kind of do a high level of these are the penalties or things that can cost you. But now my current clients, don't worry, we've already all discussed this. Any new client, I want to make sure we talk about this. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what just what I've seen and how it works. OK, so basically income and filing, uh, filing your taxes. So this is a very important, uh, very important piece. So when you are getting ready to go on Medicare, Medicare Part B primarily, 
Medicare and Social Security, they go back and they pull your income tax return from two years prior. And that's how they determine what your Part B of Medicare is going to cost you. So it is a very important if you're going to go on Medicare at age 65. It is very, very important of how you file your tax return at age 63. So for example, like I had a client, he and his wife, they both filed married, but filing separate. They filed that way at age 63. Well, they came to me at age 65. They both made a little over $100,000 each. And at 65, they came to me and I said, okay, well, here's how it works. We, uh, they told me what their income was and how they had filed their tax return. Now, the standard rate for the Part B is much lower if you file a joint tax return. So in this particular situation, and this is particular to them, you know, if they would have filed a joint return, their Part B would have been, you know, somewhere around 200 some dollars each per month. But because they filed married filing separate, it was like almost like 500 and some dollars per person. So it was a significant difference because of the way they filed. Now, actually, I told the clients, I was like, let me talk to your accountant. So we actually got on the, on the phone with their accountant. Um, they amended their tax return, filed back as joint uh, married, but filing jointly. And we was able to go through it, even with them, you know, having to pay their accountant to do that. And um, the uh, paying the difference in taxes they still was ahead overall because of their Part B premium going down. So that is very important. So if somebody's doing your taxes, you need to talk to them about how is this going to affect on the Medicare side. Secondly, large taxable events. Now, this is a thing that is very interesting to me because I see this happening. I had a client and two of his daughters were getting married. And he, all, both in the same year, poor guy. And what he had done is he had taken some of his money out of his investments to pay for that wedding, those weddings. And what happened was because he pulled that money out and that money where he had it, wherever he had the money housed in his retirement, I don't know what it was particularly, it was then counted as taxable income. So then when he filed his tax return, he had to count that as taxable income. What did that do for his Medicare premium? Two years from that point, he got hit with what Medicare calls an IRMA, income-related monthly adjustment amount, because they he had to claim that as taxable income. So we have to be super careful when pulling money out to do a, uh, like, you know, a taxable event, such as maybe financing for your kid's college, weddings. I even had somebody that pulled money out to uh, redo their bathroom and kitchen. They had to count wherever it was housed. They had to count that as taxable income and their Medicare Part B was affected two years later. Now on the prescription drug side, we'll talk about the Medicare Part D penalty. So sometimes I'll have clients say to me, well, Suzanne, I'm not taking any medications or I can get it cheaper through, you know, the Kroger Kroger Pharmacy, their discount a program or a you know good RX or something like that. I really don't even need Medicare Part D. Well, here's the situation. You have the choice to sign up for Medicare Part D as in the drug plan. But if you do not sign up at age 65, if you do not have credible coverage through an employer, so the really the only way, only way to not get the penalty is to have it through an employer plan. Maybe it's through your spouse's employer or however you have it covered right now through an employer. If you don't sign up for the Part D, when you decide to pick it up in the future, so let's say at 65, you tell me, hey, Suzanne, I don't need Part D because I'm not taking any drugs. You and you don't, And you have no insurance elsewhere. Let's say you come back to me and you say at 70, hey, Suzanne, now I want prescription drug coverage. The way that it works is we would be able to, to enroll you in a drug plan, but only an open enrollment. And then Medicare comes back and says, for every single month, you have not had coverage, either through an employer or through a Medicare plan. We're going to give you a penalty for every single month you went without coverage. So let's say you went five years without coverage. Well, your average penalty is about five, six bucks a month or uh, five, six dollars a year. 
Okay. So let's just say it's $5 a year. You just went five years without coverage. Your total penalty is now about 25 bucks. Okay. So now you go buy a drug plan and every single month they're going to tack on that total penalty. So in my example, it's going to be about 25 bucks a month. So you might go a cheap drug plan, but now you have that, that lifelong, and it's a lifelong penalty. It is not a one-time shot penalty. So that's where we want, we want to talk. And like when we, when you and I talk, or you talk with Tisha here in the office, we will definitely go over these penalties with you to make sure we've covered everything. So you have no surprises. Um, the last one we'll talk about here is um, the Medicare Part B penalty. Now, some people say, well, I don't want to pay that 100 or whatever the Part B premium is at that time. I don't want to pay that. So I'm not going to enroll in Medicare Part B. The way that it works is if you do not have employer coverage on a large group plan and you do not enroll in Medicare Part B and you decide to enroll at a later date, you will be penalized and you can only enroll at certain times of the year. And then once again, it's a lifelong penalty once you do enroll. So when we have a conversation, we talk about this because I will, we will tell you that you should or you should not enroll in Part B depending on what your situation is if you have employer coverage. Looks like I missed the health savings account in Social Security. Sorry about that. Okay, so with the health savings account, which is known as an HSA. So this is something I run into where you know, um, people are automatically enrolled into, they decide to draw social security. So let's say that you are on an employer plan right now. You decided to work until you're 70, but you decided to start drawing social security at, let's just say 68 or 69. Medicare social security automatically enrolls you into Medicare part A if you're drawing social security. So if you're 65 or older and they enroll you and drawing social security and they enroll you on a, in the part A side of Medicare, you cannot contribute to a health savings account. So that's very important because I had a client um, just a while back, he was still working. He was, he was going to retire at 70 years old. Um, he started drawing social security at 68 he came to me when he retired to 70 years old, and we found out that he had been auto-enrolled into Part A because he started drawing Social Security. And from 68 when he enrolled in Part A to 70 when he retired, he was continually uh, contributing to his health savings account, but he really should not have been because he was enro uh, enrolled in Medicare Part A. So that's really, really important to be careful of that rule. All right, I think I hit one, two, three, four. I hit all of them. All right. Okay, Suzanne, um, before you jump into uh, uh, how this applies to our current clients, I just want to go through and read some of the comments real quick uh, from some of our existing clients. So Tom says, uh, five stars, Suzanne and her team did an excellent job helping my wife and I evaluate which Medicare supplement plan to, to select. Mike says, five stars, you guys are the best. Uh, Wendy, five star, definitely. Uh, Joan, so grateful for your help over the years, reliable service, and so willing to help. Diana, uh, obviously, she's referring to Medicare being confusing, and uh, Tisha has helped her over and over. She's and Tisha is so patient with me, so thankful for your service. So very nice there. Sarah says, so glad to have your help, Tisha and Suzanne. Medicare would be so confusing without your help. So definitely five star, always updating and helping. That was from Margaret. John, completely satisfied with Suzanne. Nancy, you're the best. Glad to have you giving me advice, making my decisions a no brainer. Thanks for all the positive information and the five star ratings for sure. Um, I mean, we love what we do. It's, I'm sure you probably can even tell it's like, it's my passion. So what I find is I love every night knowing that I've helped clients get that peace of mind. So thank you all. Thank you all. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about um, our current clients. Okay. So, so a lot of times, especially during the open enrollment season, when a lot of TV commercials come on, 
with Medicare um, Advantage plans. Um, they talk about, you know, all these different type of plans. Let me kind of just go through some things why you might want to consider switching plans. Okay. So with the Medicare uh, supplemental insurances, there is no secret. Unfortunately, as you age, the premiums go up. So you may have started at, you know, 130, 140 bucks, and now you're at $200. So that might be where we want to look and see, does it make sense for you to try to go to another Medicare supplement insurance? Now, going from one supplemental insurance to another supplemental insurance, in most cases, you do have to medically qualify. So that might be um, a situation of maybe why you want to try to change because the cost of the Medicare supplement you're currently on is continuing to rise. Um, if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan, let's so let's say you, you you started out with Medicare Advantage and you're like, well, maybe as I'm getting older, I'm going to have a higher out of pocket. Should I try to go to a Medicare supplement? Once again, if you're out of that 12 month window, we can always try to move you to the Medicare supplement. You just have to be able to medically qualify for that. So we'd have to go through and ask you medical questions. Um, let's say that you're on a Medicare supplement now. And uh, when we met, you know, years ago or whenever we met, you said, hey, I'm a big traveler. I'm retired. I want to go travel. I've got kids here, there and whatnot. I want to travel, travel. And we did a Medicare supplemental for you. Let's say now your kids maybe come back home and you're more of a local, you're staying more local then we could always look at moving you to a Medicare Advantage plan. So you have, obviously, your Medicare Advantage has the networks where we got to make sure your doctors and hospitals, you know, take the plan as an in-network to get you the best rate. But obviously, we could move you to a one that has an out-of-network option, brings your premium down, higher exposure to you, but it is, you know, a less per month. Um, once again, Let's say that you uh, you just want to reduce your out-of-pocket expenses. So you're paying a lot of money for your co-pays for doctor visits or x-rays or MRIs or whatever, and you want to try to move to a Medicare supplement. Once again, I always say, I'm not the one that makes those decisions. I'm not an underwriter. I don't look at your medical history. When we do the applications, we submit them to the insurance company. They pull your medical records and either come back and say, yes, we'll take you on this or no, we won't. That's really not our, I can't do it for you um, as in making that decision. Now, there are certain times of the year that you can only do certain things. So it's not every single year, all year round, you get to do whatever you want because there are certain times that you can, we can only do certain things per Medicare rules. So definitely if you want to have a conversation about maybe switching your plans, you know, basically all you need to do is just reply to the invite email that we sent you that says, hey, I want to have a conversation to see if maybe you could move to a Medicare Advantage plan if you're in a supplement move down or move supplement to supplement or vice versa. We can at least have the conversation. And if the timing is not right, I can tell you what we're allowed to do at that point. Okay. Uh, so uh, basically, if you are a current client and you fall into one of those categories that Suzanne just talked about and you feel like, you know, maybe the supplement's getting too expensive for you, you want to look at other options or any of those other cases, just uh, shoot us an email, um, reply back to either the email that we sent you about this live cast, or, um, you know, if, you, if you've dealt with Tish on the team, you can uh, send her an email, however you want to do that, or give us a call and uh, we'll figure it out from there. So we'll we'll uh, uh, help you, you know, navigate through, you know, should you make a change or should you not? And maybe it's not the right time of year to do that. And we'll uh, set a follow up. Uh, if you're a new client or if you're somebody that's new to us and you're just getting on Medicare, you're retiring, obviously you need personalized advice. There's really no other way to do it. Uh, so go ahead and schedule that Medicare clarity call and uh, we'll put you and you either talk to Tisha or Suzanne and then uh, go through your complete situation and make sure 
everything that was talked about today, that all your bases are covered and that you're taken care of. So thanks so much. And Suzanne, anything else before we wrap it up? Was there any other questions that I needed to address? Uh, I, I don't see any, uh, if anybody, if there are any on here, uh, the team will take care of it. And if we missed anybody, just send us an email or call the office and we will obviously get you taken care of. So thanks so much. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.